Do you like double digit yields? Well, who doesn't? Stick around to get the skinny on some fat dividend payers. Hi everyone, I'm Mark Lichtenfeld, Chief Income Strategist with the Oxford Club. Welcome to State of the Market. I recently got an email from an Oxford Income Letter subscriber. Now that's my monthly newsletter where I recommend dividend growth stocks, bonds, and offer market commentary. Now it's similar to what I do here, but far more involved in without the Seinfeld clips. But he's ripping me off. Check out the link in the description to see how Oxford Income Letter readers use my proprietary system to generate 12% average annual returns over 10 years. The reader, who we'll refer to as Mr. High Yield from here on out, wanted to know why I hadn't recommended any high yielding stocks. Now, I have several chonky yielders in our portfolio, including 9.4%, 8.6%, and 8.3%. But that's not enough for Mr. High Yield. Oh, no. Mr. High Yield wants yields in excess of 10%, 11%, or even 13%. And he listed a bunch of big booty stocks offering giant dividends like these. Now, believe me, no one likes dividends more than me. I like dividends so much, I wrote the book on dividends twice. And I'm doing it a third time. That's right, the third edition of Get Rich with Dividends should be available early next year. So trust me, when it comes to dividends, I want to give you the heftiest yields possible. But you can't judge a dividend by the girth of its yield alone. When I recommend a dividend, it's because I believe the stock is a good deal as a whole. What good is a 10% yield if your stock drops 20%? In fact, the problem with many of these high-yielding stocks is the yield is too damn high. For example, let's take a look at one of the stocks mentioned by Mr. High Yield. Annaly Capital Management, ticker symbol NLY, has a redunculous yield of 13.2%. Sure, a 13% yield is mighty tempting, but one of the reasons it sports a 13% yield is because the stock is down 31% in the past year. And it's not just the stock price that's falling. The dividend has been dropping faster than standards at closing time. In 2009, the quarterly dividend was as high as 75 cents per share. After 13 cuts in 12 years, it's fallen to 22 cents. Annalise management yells cut more than Stanley Kubrick. If you'd bought this stock back in 2009 because of that juicy 75 cents per share quarterly dividend, an annualized yield of 17% at the time, you'd be effectively earning a 5% yield today and lost nearly two thirds of your money. It's my money. What should I do, throw it out the window? So how do we separate strong, high-yielding chonkers from empty calorie dividends like Annaly? Well, there's an old expression. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. That's as me now! Heard that before. That's as me now! That's as me now! That's as me now! For years, Annaly has essentially been standing on a soapbox yelling into a megaphone that it will reduce shareholders' payout the second the waters get choppy. So compare that to a company like VF Corporation, ticker VFC, that has raised its dividend every year since 1974. Richard Nixon was still pounding Mai Tais in the Oval Office when VF Corp started raising their dividend, and they've never eased off the gas, not even once. You don't think in those 49 years VF Corp faced some hard times? I mean, they lived in the same world we do, yet they remained committed to taking care of their investors and raising their dividend every year. Another factor that plays a huge part in the equation is whether the company generates enough cash flow to actually pay its dividend. To find that out, just look at the company's cash flow statement and subtract capital expenditures from cash flow from operations. That'll give you the company's free cash flow, the most conservative measure of cash flow. It's not wild and untamed like its bad boy cousin operating cash flow. Now, compare your free cash flow to the dividend. If the dividend is 75% or less of free cash flow, you're probably in decent shape. Now, for companies like Annaly, however, we use a different metric. Annaly is a mortgage read and makes money like a bank by lending capital. So we look at a line item called net interest income. In 2021, Annaly generated over $1.7 billion in net interest income and paid more than $1.3 billion in dividends. In the immediate term, that actually looks pretty okay. Hey, I'm in tip-top shape. Tip-top? <laughs> but if you take into account the company's history of cutting dividends like a chef on a Ginsu knife commercial, it's obvious what will happen the next time there's a hiccup in business. Remember, folks, 
High yields are great, but only if they stay high and only if the stock performs well in conjunction with the dividend. Otherwise, you're just getting paid to lose money. Mathematically, I had to do it, sir. Now, if you want to find out how my Oxford Income Letter subscribers are able to generate 12% average annual returns with dividends, click the link in the description. Thanks for watching State of the Market. I'm Mark Lichtenfeld. I'll see you next time.